In this video, I'm going to be taking you through the ultimate Excel Gantt chart that we've prepared and you can download at the link below. Basically, it's meant to work exactly like Microsoft Project. You can list out your tasks, you can assign these tasks to an individual, you can manually set the activity start and finish dates, or you can do it using dependencies. For example, you can link activities based on the sequence. We've got different types of linkages, finish to start, start to finish, depending on what you need. If you've used dependencies, it will automatically calculate the start and finish dates and plot a GAD chart. And you can also track progress. In this video, I'm going to take you through how to use it and how to create a project schedule using it. You can create a project schedule in three easy steps. First thing you need to do is you need to list out all the activities you need to complete to complete the project. Second thing you need to do is you need to work out the duration for each activity. So you need to know how long each activity takes. And then the final step is you need to sequence the activity. So you need to put them in the order they need to be completed in to complete the project scope. The first thing we're going to do to create our project schedule is to list out all the activities we need to complete to complete the project scope. This step is so important because you need to define every activity that's needed to be completed to complete the project. And if you're missing activities, your schedule isn't going to be correct. So the way we do this is we create a work breakdown structure. A work breakdown structure is a hierarchical decomposition of the project scope. For example, if we're building a bridge, we might break that down into the design, the foundations, the structure, the roadworks, the asphalting, and then the final training and handover. This work breakdown structure needs to be comprehensive. And by creating the work breakdown structure, we'll identify all the tasks that are needed to complete the project scope. Once you've identified all your tasks, you're going to list these out in your Gantt chart. So if you go to the column, the activity column, just simply go through and list out every task that needed to be done to complete the project scope. So for as an example, I'm creating a jet Gantt chart for a solar farm. So I'm listing out piling, building the trackers, installing the panels, doing the electrical works, the commissioning. I'm listing out every task that needs to be done to complete the project. Once we've listed out all our activities, the next thing we need to work out is how long each of these tasks is going to take us. So we need to go through each of the tasks in our work breakdown structure and make an accurate estimate as to the duration. Now, this process is ultimately going to be iterative because it's impacted by resources, it's impacted by the delivery methodology, but as a first cut, we should go through the sequence. So the first thing we should do is list out our tasks. The next thing we should do is to estimate how long each of these tasks is going to take. There's a couple of different ways we can do this. So we can ask an expert, we can go to someone who's completed a similar task on another project and ask for their input. We can get historic data, so we can look at other similar projects and work out how long that activity took on those projects and use that as the basis for our estimate. Then we can adjust these by a parameter. So that means that there's a base quantity that is driving the duration of the task. We simply adjust it by that. So for example, if we're talking about trenching and we know on another project, trenching one kilometer took us one month, then if on our project, we need to trench two kilometers, then we can make the assumption that that activity is going to take us two months because we've adjusted by the length of trenching. So that's parametric estimating. The final thing we can do is we can use three point estimating. So three point estimating. So we estimate the duration of a task based on three se separate estimates. So we could make an assumption as to how long the ta task will take with a worst case situation, a normal case, and a best case. Then we take a weighted average of the three of these. But there's lots of different ways we can do it. But ultimately, the purpose of this step is to make an accurate estimate as to the duration of the task. The next step is to go through and enter each of these individual durations in our Gantt chart. So we want to put in the duration in days that we think each of these tasks is going to take us. Now that we've identified all the work that needs to be done to complete the project, and we've estimated how long each of these individual tasks is going to take us, the final step is we need to put them in the correct order. Any project is going to have a defined sequence of activities that need to be completed. You can't just do all the work at once. There's some order to how we have to do it. For building a bridge, we need to do the foundations before we can erect the structure, before we can do the asphalting and roadworks. There's a sequence these tasks need to be done at. 
the sequence is going to drive the overall duration of the project. Now, there's a couple of different relationships that tasks can have. There's the classic, which is a finish to start relationship. So one activity needs to finish before the other activity can start. We can have a relationship where there's start to start relationships where both activities need to start at the same time. We can do finish to finish relationships where two activities need to finish at the same time. Or we can have a more unique relationship is where one activity needs to start before another can finish. Now, you had to find good examples of each of these relationships depending on the type of project you're doing. But the most common ones you're going to see is finish to start where one activity needs to finish before another can start or start to start relationships with a lag, which means where one activity can start only after a set period of time after the previous activity has started. All activities are gonna have a relationship to another activity in the schedule, except for the first activity, which isn't gonna have a predecessor, and the final activity, which isn't gonna have a successor. When we go through and do the schedule, you'll notice there's two types of relationships activities can have. You can have mandatory relationships where activities need to occur in a fixed sequence. For example, we can't do the structure of the bridge till we've done the foundations. That's the example of a mandatory relationship. Or we can have discretionary relationships between tasks. This is where, for whatever reason, to save money, to optimize resource usage, we're choosing to do tasks in a certain sequence. For example, if we're talking about trenching, we can start, if we have a two kilometer run of trenching to do, we could start five separate crews, each doing 400 meter sections, in which case there would be no discretionary linkages between each of these sex sections of trenching. However, if we only had one crew and we only want to use one crew to complete the project, then there would be a discretionary linkage between each of these sections of trenching. That's just an example, but there's lots of different types of discretionary linkages. My recommendation is when you're doing your first cut of the schedule, just focus on the mandatory relationships, then you can go back and optimize the schedule and look at the discretionary ones. The final thing is you can have lags. So you can have two tasks that have a lag between them. For example, once you've poured a concrete foundation, you might have to wait 28 days for the concrete to cure before you can start standing structural steel. You'd have to put a lag between these two tasks. So the first thing you need to do is you need to set an activity start date. So simply enter a project start date and manually link that to the first activity. Then calculate the duration. You just simply add the duration of the first task onto the manually set start date. You can do this for any activity you want to manually sequence, but the more effective way of creating a schedule is to link activities and put in place these relationships between activities because as you start to adjust things, the whole schedule will recalculate. Basically, all you have to do to do that is to put in the ID of the activity that's linked to the activity. So for example, project kickoff has a finish to start relationship with design. Now what you're gonna notice is there's an error in the spreadsheet if you don't have a certain set. So you need to go into formulas and the options and change the spreadsheet to allow for iterative calculations. If not, you'll get an error in the spreadsheet like the blue line shown on the screen. So just make sure you quickly go into your settings and change the spreadsheet to allow for iterative calculations. Once you fix that setting, simply go through the spreadsheet and put in place all the linkages between activity. Just enter the ID and also the type of relationship. So finish to start or start to start and any sort of labs you want. So for example, Earthworks can only start once the design's been completed. Piling can only begin once the Earthworks done. However, we're going to change that activity relationship to a start to start with a lag. Basically what that means in practice is we're not going to start, we're not going to wait till the earthworks are fully done before we start piling. We're going to put in place a 10 day lag. So that means 10 days after piling starts, earthworks can start. And if you think about this in practice, we'd want a certain amount of earthworks done before we had access to start the site to start the piling. So that's why we're using a start to start relationship there. And then as we go through, we simply enter all the different activity relationships to create our schedule. Once we've created our schedule and move into the execution phase of the project, we need to monitor progress. Basically what we wanna do 
for each of the activities in our schedule, we want to calculate a percentage complete and provide a status update. So an activity can be in progress, it can be held up, or it can be completed. And then against each activity, we want to record the skip percentage complete. As we're doing this, we should also make sure we're going through and updating any start dates or estimated remaining durations to keep the schedule relevant. Updating progress is super simple. Just go through the spreadsheet and against each task, determine whether it's complete, in progress, blocked or started. Then you can enter the percentage complete of each task and it's an easy way to see the status of where we're up to. Then you also got to, for any in progress tasks, you should go through and make sure you update the remaining duration. This is important because it's going to calculate the future plan start dates for subsequent activities. And this process is really important to maintain and go through continually during the construction phase so we keep our schedule relevant and so it remains a useful planning tool. As we enter the percentages complete, you got to see quickly and visually how these are shown. Then you can print it and export it as a PDF, send it around to management and send it around to your team to give them a quick update of the schedule. And it's as simple as that. It's a really, really simple Excel tool. I use it a lot. I find it much easier to use the Microsoft project. And if you want it, just simply click on the link in the description and you'll be able to download it for free.